this, but what we wanted to do is give you a chance to see uh, some of what these kids are doing and something that was on my mind uh, yesterday after, after they performed and put this together uh, is, is a couple of things. One is I was listening to something on the radio and somebody was being interviewed and they, they were asked, what are you hopeful for right now in, in the world? And, and she had this snarky kind of nothing response and, and there was kind of a lot of light laughter about it. But she said, I don't necessarily have anything that makes me hopeful. And it just floored me because I realized that if she only could work in a school, if she could only have a chance to be in a place that, that we get to work in and see every day, she would have a completely different picture. So a lot of what Grandparents and Special Friends Day is about is really being hopeful together because these kids are just incredible and they're doing things that are at their highest levels all the time and they're working really hard and they're just excellent humans. So we're really excited to turn them over to the rest of the world, but until then, uh, we wanted to say good morning and welcome. Um, we know that a lot of you are grandparents, but a lot of you are, are friends of the students here, and it's really great to have you. So this is really kind of about all the supports that you like to have around a single kid, and it does take a lot, um, and we're grateful that, that you're here. So I was going to make a joke about how you know how great your grandkids are, but it's your children I want to talk to you about, <laughs> but I couldn't think of the, the punchline, so we'll let that linger. Your kids are doing pretty good, too. They're very well behaved, almost all the time. <laughs> we begin everything that's important with um, a prayer, and so today I'd do the same. This is a prayer of Oscar Romero, who was recently sainted, and so it actually is a, an, an apt time for him, and, and, but also, I think, for what we're doing today. It helps now and then to step back and take the long view. The kingdom is not beyond our efforts. It is even beyond our vision. We accomplish in our lifetime only a tiny fraction of the magnificent enterprise that's God's work. Nothing we do is complete, which is another way of saying that the kingdom of God always lies just beyond us. No statement says all that should be said. No prayer fully expresses our faith. No confession brings perfection. No pastoral visit brings wholeness. No set of goals and objectives includes everything. This is what we are about. We plant the seeds that one day will grow. We water seeds already planted, knowing that they hold the future promise. We lay foundations that will need further development. We provide yeast that affects far beyond our capabilities. We cannot do everything, and there is something wonderful and liberating in realizing that. This enables us to do something, and to do it very well. And it may be complete, but it is still a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter and do the rest. We may never see the end results, but that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are workers, not master builders, ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future not our own. Amen. Welcome, and we will jump right in and let you see our school. When you see these kids, most really important is to think how incredible the teachers are that are behind them. So before we begin, can we give the teachers a big round of applause, please? Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Senora Teresa, the Spanish teacher. And we are going to sing the song Los Colores uh, with kindergarten and first grade.
to do an action. Persuasive writing is an extremely important skill, whether you're selling something, as we intend to do so now, or writing for a cause. In the spirit of Halloween, our class has taken on new, rule, new roles as real estate agents, representing ghostly Gallus properties, and we would love to show you some of our latest listings that have just come up for sale. Hi, my name is Ayla, and unfortunately I'm a missing member of the group Island, but she loved us so much. Now to the, now to the intro. I really hope that you love this house, and you really should buy it, because first of all, it comes with so much ghosts and goblin friends. Second, you get an awesome skull-shaped pool and a secret passageway that leads to a cemetery. The cemetery is there so your loved ones can always be with you. Now, if you want to know about the pool, then listen to me. As you know, the pool is skull-shaped and has pumpkins, but what you do not know is that they are jack lanterns and they act as your lifeguards and bring you snacks, if you are nice to them. And if not, they will disappear. But I didn't forget to tell you that we are ghosts of Gallus Pumpkins. This is Ayla. and I'm going to talk about the living things in the house. Well, some aren't exactly alive, but here they are. The first thing is a werewolf. The second is a waiter ghost. Third is a chef ghost. Fourth is the butler ghost that knows all the math facts in the world and will help you with your homework and taxes. <laughs> then is the pickle in the closet that likes to tell jokes. Surprises waiting for you. We promise you that this haunted house is the best. We hope you find this house. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Lupe. Today I'm going to tell you about our outdoor design, paint job, and the architect. First off, paint job. We have a lovely gray paint job with a spooky texture, and the architect is Mr. McCree. Now for the outdoor design. We have a lovely backyard roof. Um, and once in a while, you might see the ghost butler down there. Also, we have a wonderful misty hot tub and two night guards that guard the front gates. Hi, my name is Sophia. I want to tell you about the furniture that comes in the house. You will get some pumpkins that watch and guard your house. Inside, you will get seven bedrooms and five bathrooms. There will be a there will be a secret room and all your stairs turn into slides for intruders. And if you're tired, they will also turn into a slide. There are many codes and there is a bowling alley and movie theater and it's for the cheap, cheap price of one million dollars. <laughs> Peterson from Ghostly Gallus Property. Today we will be showing you a spooky haunted house located at 1884 Cemetery Center Road in Florida. It has five bedrooms and four and a half bathrooms. This two story was built in 1843. The front yard has a graveyard dating back to hundreds of years ago. The original owners are still currently haunting the house. To be exact, there are 406 dead trees that have been dead and still standing for thousands of years. When you pull up in the middle of a roundabout, there is a statue of a man that was the original owner. And if you stare into his eyes, he will hypnotize you. So watch out. <laughs> Surrounding the house, there are scream screech bushes. When you cut them too short, they scream. So these bushes will help that you don't cut them too short. Growing up the side of the house, there is a candy growing vine, kind of like grapes. If you pick the candy, it will rain candy. And if you love the beach, this is perfect house for you because you are just minutes away from all the Florida coastline and all the fantastic beaches. Hello, and I will be telling you about the bedrooms and bathrooms of this amazing haunted house. The two master have a feature of their very own ghosts. These ghosts just aren't any ghosts, but are the ghosts of El of Elvis Presley and his rock and roll friends. These ghosts will play Elvis Presley's music all day long for your pleasure. The master bath has a shower that is always on and a bath that is always full. 
the perfect temperature and never gets cold. The three other have have a double bed, a sofa, and share a Jack and Jill bathroom. And all of the bathrooms have toothbrushes that will that will um uh, um do a brush your teeth for you. Hello, my name is Grayson, and I will be telling you some alarming features from this ghostly haunted house. There is a beautiful countertop in the kitchen that will cook whatever you want. There is over 200 million spiders in this house, and they will do all of the house chores, and the web soak up dirt so you don't have to clean it. This house also includes a movie room. Every movie is 3D. This means whenever you watch a movie, the characters will pop out at you. Can you imagine it? Jurassic Park? Hello, my name is Raymond. I'll be talking about the backyard of this Berlin haunted house. It includes a blood curling cemetery. The backyard also has an affinity pool that never ends, and if you go too far, you'll disappear. This haunted house also includes zombie chickens, which are surprisingly huge. When the eggs hatch, the chicken is a zombie chick. But don't worry, they are not deadly. They're actually extremely friendly. These zombie chickens will become your best friends. And are you ready? You can have all of this for a thrilling price of one million dollars. Thank you for your time. Hello, up. Hello, I'm Olivia Pinkin and this property is a beauty. It's located at 1313 Ghost Road in wonderful Gloomy Hollow, Connecticut. It's placed on top of the old period graveyard. It comes with many ghosts and it's fully really furnished. Last but not least, it comes with limited edition recliner massage chairs and spa certificates. Now I'll hand it off to Lucy Corrado. Hello, my name is Lucy Corrado and I'll be telling you about the inside features and the front yard of this amazing property. This house is on a five-acre parcel on 13 bedrooms and 13 bathrooms. Also, every bedroom and bathroom comes with its own TV. This property comes with the ghost of your homework, ghost clowns, and dolls. This house has a haunted tree house with a driveway that is very long. This haunted property is fully constant so that no one can escape or enter. Here in this terrific haunted house, there are so many ghosts that live in your two-acre graveyard that come to the house. There is also a secret wonderful tunnel to a secret ghost room where the ghosts turn visible. And if you see one of them when they are visible, they will become your servant by some secret ghost law. The secret passage is located at the bottom of the infinity pool that goes on forever. It is beautiful and amazing, but it will take you on and on, so you might not want to go too far. Inside the ghost room, we made sure there's a dryer because you'll get very wet getting there. You might, well, you might be scared of the yard work on such a big property, but never fear. Every Monday, the skeletons rise from the grave and do all of the housework and yard on all five acres of the beautiful house. So you might want to get out of the house on Monday, but I promise when you come back, it will be even cleaner than you. In fact, they even have a five-star rating from all of the former people since the 18th century when it was built. Remember, this could all be yours for a price of only $1 million. transport you more than millions of years 
back and forward in time. Also, in one of the bedrooms, there is a secret passageway leading to the lost city that's not so lost anymore, Atlantis. There is also extraordinary ghost guards who protect you from bad spirits. One of my favorite things about this property is that there are bat and cat helpers. When you need to go upstairs, take the escalator. When you need to go back down, hop on the slide and slide your way to the first floor. There is also a movie theater in the warm and cozy basement along with a popcorn machine that serves the best popcorn you have ever tasted. This movie theater has reclining chairs with blankets and pillows galore. Our property has spooky but silly ghost butlers who serve you whatever and whenever you want something. Now here are about our amazing front and backyard features from Tyson. Hi, my name is Tyson. I'm going to tell you about some of the front and backyard features. We have lots and lots of glorious pumpkins. We also have majestic bat houses, a wonderful magic tree house, brilliant outdoor showers, and a beautiful magic, magic gardens. Come and visit and even better buy this amazing masterpiece. Now Jill will tell you about all of our glorious rooms. Hello, my name is Joe. Let me tell you about our extravagant bathrooms and bedrooms. Our bathrooms are made of diamonds. Also, each bathroom has, a heated toilet, has heated toilet seats. These bathrooms have magnificent showers. Each bathroom comes with a magical Alexa that can do anything you would like her to do. In our dining room, we have magical chandeliers and TVs in every room. Our bedrooms are made of gold and have beautiful canopy beds and, and window seats that look over a majestic view. I'll hear about our construction from five. Today I will be informing you about the construction of this beautiful property that can be yours with the click of a button. It's a five-story five -story castle that sits on six acres. This castle is constructed from amethyst and black marble. The pathway is made from pure rubies and includes ruby stained glass, bat windows on the fifth floor and ruby pumpkin. There are equal bedrooms and seven diamond bathrooms Downstairs, there is a magnificent bookcase that has been there since 1868 when the house was built. In the basement, there is a private movie theater. Remember, this all could be yours for a bargain price of one million dollars. Press of a button on the wall gets you an exercise room 
and a huge black dome that has zero gravity. Did you hear that? Zero gravity. Now this feature you will just not want to live without. Now to back with the special features. about the kitchen and dining room. In most real estate listings, I would say these things, they say things like, our house is the best of mine. I'm just going to tell you exactly what it comes with. Psych! You have to buy our house since it's so the best. In the awesome kitchen, there's a big kitchen island in the middle and a giant, beautiful, L-shaped obsidian countertop. The sink water can be instantly hot or cold, whichever you prefer. The dishwasher cleans in one minute. Amazing. The kitchen has five fully trained cooks that will cook whatever you want. The kitchen has an oven that will be at any temperature in one second too. Now for the dining room. Inside there is the nicest silk chairs with gold frames. The dining room also comes with a skeleton butler that will serve you food. This awesome house also comes fully furnished with the newest Halloween furniture and has bats and ghosts everywhere. The house also comes with friendly Freddy the ghost that will do your homework, do your chores, and make whatever you want. Last but not least, it comes with a black Lamborghini that goes 5,000 miles per hour. The garage also has a family of bats, all named George that will tell you jokes, and a spider named Harold that will break dance. In the upstairs, there's a big glass dome that has giant stone flowers that will say, Ah, oh, let me out, when you wake up. Now, isn't this a haunted home that you cannot live without? And this could be yours for a very low price of only 1 million and 30 cents. But if you act now, you get the discount of 30 cents. So I'm not from home yet, Ghostly Gallus Properties. This concludes our listings today. Thank you from all of the agents at Ghostly Gallus Properties. Hey, creators, um, pick a service project to complete throughout the year. Hopefully you were able to um, peruse the whiteboards that are um, on both sides and see what each student in the eighth grade um, is doing for their service project. Uh, however, today we are just going to, uh, four groups are going to share with you what they are doing uh, this year for their service project. Hello, my name is Libby Hard, and for my service project, I will be going into the first grade classroom to teach them about what it is to be a leader. I will be doing this by reading children's books and discussing them with leadership values. Um, the school I value that I am portraying is LEAD. And I believe it is important for these kids to learn how to be leaders now so that they can be future leaders of our school. Thank you. And also, if you want to see my poster, it is right over there, and it is called The Next Generation. Thank you. Hi, I'm Gabby. And I'm Giselle. Today we are here to tell you about our year-long service project. We came together on the common ground that we both adore a great book and that we share a love of reading. Our service project is a book club for second through fifth graders to inspire them to read more often. Um, one of our school-wide values is learn. We d our project demonstrates learn because we are trying to help foster a love of reading in these kids. We are also trying to help them learn for themselves how great, a great, how great reading can really be and to instill a love of books in them. My name is Christian. I'm Will. For our service project, we'll be walking dogs to raise money for the Betty Quan Chin Homeless Foundation. Betty Quan Chin helps provide food, water, and showers to the homeless. Along with walking dogs, we may also volunteer at her facility in Eureka. Our project embodies love because we are spreading kindness and building community through helping the homeless. I'm Carrie, and in seventh grade, we read a nonfiction novel called A Long Walk to Water, and it revolves around people in South Sudan who couldn't get to clean water. So for our service project, Matea, Carrie, and I will be babysitting in order to donate money to an organization that builds wells in South Sudan. Uh, our project embodies love and lead because we are serving and giving back to others who don't have as much as we have. Thank you, and make sure to look around. Um, our posters are posted in the back. I'm the third grade teacher here, and I have one of my students, Owen, who's going to introduce our learning today. Good morning. 
Third grade will demonstrate how we think creatively and communicate effectively as we share some fun things we are learning. Enjoy the show. Yes, I 
And can you explain more about what that means? Yes, we are reading, this, we are reading the same book as thousands of kids around the world. And we connect with them on our Chromebooks and through Skype. Nice! I certainly call that global. Okay, we are down to our last question, and it's a doozy. What is the latest dance craze in third grade? Oh, a tie. Do you have an answer? A hype. And yours? The boss. <laughs> Third grade audience, I need your help. <laughs> the answer is and booklets full of facts. Today, we will be sharing two facts about each planet with you. We demonstrated love, learn, lead by thinking creatively and critically when making our projects. We also had to solve problems collaboratively when we were deciding which facts to share with you. The sun is a yellow dwarf star that contains 99.86% of the mass in the solar system. Mercury is cold at night due to no atmosphere. One day on Venus is longer than a year on Earth. Venus was named after the Roman god of love and beauty. Earth's atmosphere is 21% oxygen. Earth's rotation is gradually slowing. The soil on Mars is good for growing asparagus. Mars is the second smallest and second most habitable planet. Jupiter is two and, two and a half the size of all the other planets. Only the Sun, Moon, and Venus shine brighter than Jupiter. Saturn's rings are made of dust, rock, and ice. Saturn can be seen with the naked eye. Uranus is named after the Greek god of the sky. Winds on Uranus can reach up to 560 miles per hour. The oceans on Neptune are made of electrified carbon dioxide. One year on Earth is 164.8 years on Neptune. Pluto's major moon Charon is sometimes considered a dwarf planet, too. Pluto is one-third water. Good morning, families. I'm really excited you're here. My name is Kylie Clark. I teach second grade here at Presentation. Um, earlier, Mr. Parker spoke about hope, and I think that I'm not alone in hoping we're helping bring up worldly bilingual students. It's been my pleasure to collaborate with Ms. Monica Miller and her work in the studio, and also Senora Tere um, in our Spanish department, who are both lovely educators, and I think that's just such a special thing we have here on campus. Um, we have set up, which I hope you've seen already, and if you haven't, please make sure to view our ofrenda in the library. I'll let Monica speak about the pieces you'll see in there, but an ofrenda is traditionally placed in the heart of a community, so it made sense to put it in the library where we read and we hold Spanish classes. And Monica um, posted and published many of her pieces there that were done in the studio. I was very interested to learn that the ofrenda actually came from Aztec culture. And the Aztecs believed that a soul entered a different realm. And then once the Spanish conquest occurred, there was a lot of Catholic beliefs that kind of commingled with that. And they then believed that the soul was eternal, and that you could actually be viewed by loved ones and they could view you. So the idea of an ofrenda is to show family and how we're all connected and um, honor them, 
and how we're still learning and loved by those traditions that we share in our family. So on the ofrenda, you'll see one of my students brought a cookbook, which was really special because a great-great-grandmother who was the author of these recipes has passed them down, and her family's still cooking them to this day. I thought that was really special. So please take a chance to see that. I'm going to let my students teach you about Dia de los Muertos, so I'm sure it's much more interesting coming from them. And then we'll have Monica speak about the pieces that you'll see in the library. And the students will do a short dance and song in both English and Spanish by Miguel from Coco. Here's Miss Miller. Hi, I'm Miss Miller. Um, I'm really happy to be joining your presentation school. It's a great community. Um, I was very happy that Kylie asked me to help collaborate on Day of the Dead projects. And in the library, you'll see students work from all grades, um, the Pelvicado, Sugar skulls molded from model magic, printmaking done by the sixth and seventh graders. Um, just a bunch of beautiful work is happening in there. And then I, I would also say check out all the classrooms. There's lots of artwork that we've been creating in our studio there. And come by my classroom to see some of the eighth grade painting. Thanks. Here are some second graders who are going to inform you on Dia de los Muertos or Day of the Dead. This October, students have been studying the Day of the Dead or Dia de los Muertos. You may have seen the movies Coco or the Book of Life. Dia de los Muertos is a holiday earning deceased relatives and friends burning from the Catholic All Souls Day, as well as Aztec and other indigenous beliefs. Dia de los Muertos is, is a vibrant holiday that bears little resemblance to Halloween. Dia de los Muertos is a multi-day celebration wherein food, candles, and calabitas are brought to the graves of those who have passed on as ofrendas or offerings. Miracles are used in abundance due to the belief that they invite the spirits of the dead back to earth. Contrary to the spooky connotations of Halloween, Dia de los Muertos is a bright and cheerful celebration. October 31st, All Hallows Eve, the children make a children's altar to invite the angelitos, spirits of children, to come back to visit and see their family and how their family has honored them. November 1st is All Saints Day, and the adult spirits will come to visit. November 2nd is All Souls Day, when families go to the cemetery to decorate the graves and tombs of their relatives. The three-day feast that is filled with the miracles, the flowers of the dead, the myrtles, the bread of the dead, sugar school treats, cardboard skeletons, paper decorations, fruit and incense, of, and of other traditional foods and decorations. There is a nothing scary or grotesque about the Day of the Dead. This holiday is showing honors to loved ones no longer with us and thinking about how they have contributed to the lives who are still with us. You won't find ghosts, monsters, or pumpkins on Dia de los Muertos decorations. They are not intended to be scary. They are meant to pay respect to families and honors to the cycle of life and death. Instead, sugar schools are adorned with brightly colored fun, frosting, coral beads, feathers, and even rhinestones. You may also find the day for the sugar schools for opening the this deceased person on the with the ring across the forehead. The view of the sugar school decorating is remembered that it's about celebrating the life of a loved one. Women decorated with marks and food process a product of a Catholic influence on the holiday. Miracles may this in all sorts of patterns. Oftentimes, the name of the least person on the street for the wooden cross is a dress up. Thank you. So we're going to now show a song and dance from Coco. I wanted to share that students have read and written this song. Not written, but they've read and done writing about it in English. And they've also read it in Spanish, which I think is quite advanced for being second graders and very proud of their work.
the fifth grade. I'm Tracy Walther, a fifth grade teacher. We've been studying early American history from colonization through the revolution, and they're going to share that portion of our country's history with you through student written raps in a skit. In the beginning, there was vast wilderness waiting for exploration. This land became known as the New World. In the early 1600s, Europeans began to arrive, seeking adventure, wealth, and religious freedom. These brave men and women settled in the north, down the Atlantic coast, into the balmy southern region. Religious freedom is what they wish. They go whaling, shipping, and they like to fish. The pilgrims came here and slept in little pods. The winters are cold and the summer's pretty hot. We're the middle colonies in Europe, back to Europe. We're the leading food producer of the 13 colonies, Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, Delaware. The summers are hot and the winters are cold there. Last but not least, we are the southern colonies, and our farming success is guaranteed, and our crops were tobacco, indigo, and ice because our weather down here is pretty nice. Since we have worked all through the days, we imported African-American slaves. They worked on plantations, but in the until 1763, restricting our right to expand. Then came the Sugar Act. Oh, the Sugar Act. Second Continental Congress. I say we need to let King George III of England know how we feel. We have discussed many of the things that the King has done to upset us, such as the Quartering Act, the Proclamation of 1763, and taxation without representation. I have asked Thomas Jefferson to head a committee to write a document explaining that we want to be a free and independent country. Here is how he started the new document. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and the equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. Order! It continues with the Declaration of Our Rights as Free Men. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that, among, that they are endowed by the Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of people to alter or to abolish it, and to institute new government. We have included the evil things that King George has done to us. He has sent armies over to America, even though there is peace. 
He has taken our laws away from us and the rights to live the way we want. He has refused to let other people from other lands come over to America and has sent his own new officials to watch over us. He has told Indians to riot, attack, and kill Americans. He even protects his soldiers when they are guilty of crimes such as murder. Order! After listening our complaints, we have given our statement of independence. We, the representatives of the United States of America, in general Congress, assembled, appealing to the supreme judge of the world for the rectitude of our intention, do, in the name and by authority of the good people of these colonies, solemnly publish and declare that these colonies are and of right ought to be free and independent states. And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor! I took the class to Ashland, Oregon, 24 seventh graders. It was an adventure. <laughs> and so we're about to tell you a little bit about it. Enjoy. <laughs> Ashland is a city in Jackson County in the state of Oregon. Ashland, Oregon has a lot of geothermal activity which could possibly be used to heat homes. In Ashland, we saw Romeo and Juliet, Othello, Sense and Sensibility, and The Book of Will. My favorite play was Romeo and Juliet. Ashland's population is 21,117 people. Shakespeare married Anne Hathaway when he was 18. William Shakespeare was born into a large family. He had eight siblings. However, his two oldest siblings died at birth. Shakespeare died on April 23, 1616. He died on his birthday. William Shakespeare invented over 1,700 words for the English language while writing his plays. William Shakespeare wrote 38 plays and 154 songs. After adding up the total amount of lines in all of his plays and dividing it by about how many lines per hour, I figured out he's written roughly 105 hours worth of plays. The scene you're going to be watching is from the play Romeo and Juliet, my favorite play. The Montagues and the Capulets have a family feud, but Romeo and Juliet still love each other. Juliet's best friend is the nurse. She loves Juliet, but does not support Romeo and Juliet being together. Romeo's best friend is Mercutio. Mercutio finds Romeo to be too sappy. Romeo and Juliet would do anything for each other, even die for each other. And now you will see the balcony scene from Romeo and Juliet. Please enjoy. <laughs> Juliet, oh Juliet, where are you? You are so beautiful, so kind, so smart, and so funny. And you are really good at baseball. Are you there, Juliet? <laughs> oh yes, Romeo, it's me. I'm here, look at the star-filled sky. Oh, speak again, bright angel. You shine like a star in the valley of the moon. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, where art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. Shall I hear more, or shall I speak at this? 
It is but thy name that is my enemy. I wish our families could get along and we did not have to hide our love. I just want to be with you and I want our families to stop fighting. This will never happen, Juliet. So we must marry and not tell anyone. We will be together forever and live happily ever after. After this scene, Romeo and Juliet get married. One day later, a fight happens between the two families and Romeo ends up getting banished from Verona. Once Juliet hears this, she fakes her death by taking a potion that makes her go unconscious. Romeo is told that Juliet is dead and he commits suicide by her. And Juliet wakes up and sees Romeo and commits suicide as well. The end. <laughs> I'm Teresa Caselli, the first grade teacher. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, we have the kindergartners, first graders and second graders up here today. And we get together once a week on Monday afternoons to um, celebrate together something we call chapel, where we um, say a blessing for our school. We sing a few songs. We invite leaders up to lead so they have an opportunity to lead in front of a smaller group. And we also invite birth students with birthdays up so that we can say a blessing for them and sing a song to them. But we always end with this great little song that encourages everybody to go out into the larger world to be a leader and to shine their light. So if you know the words, sing along. share with you what it means to be a Presentation Patriot athlete. P is for perseverance. We overcome difficulties. When presented with a challenge, we face it head on and see it through. It's hard to be the person who never gives up. A Blue, professional baseball player. A is for athleticism. We work hard and practice to become strong, agile, and fit. We hustle, run, jump, and give 100% on the court or the field. You must expect great things of yourself before you can do them. Michael Jordan, professional basketball player. T is for tenacity. We bond together and work as one. We are determined. We overcome. Only a person who knows what it is like to be defeated can reach down to the bottom of their soul and come up with the extra ounce of power it takes to win. Muhammad Ali, professional boxer. R is for resilience. When faced with a tough situation, we are able to recover and remain tough. During my 18 years playing professional baseball, I came to bat almost 10,000 times. I struck out about 1,700 times and walked maybe 1,800 times. You figure, figure a ball player will average about 500 at bat a season. That means I played seven years without ever hitting a ball. Mike McGee Mantle, professional baseball player. 
eyes or intelligence. We play smart. We apply our knowledge and skills to the game. Baseball is 90% mental, the other half physical. Yogi Bear, a professional baseball player. O is for optimism. We remain confident in our ability to succeed. Win or lose, we always have a positive attitude and learn from our performance. Things turn out best for the people who make the best out of the way things turn out. Don Wooden, UCLA basketball coach. E is for teamwork. In a cooperative effort, we work together for the common goals of the team. I am a member of the team, and I rely on the team. I defer to it, sacrifice for it, because the team, not the individual, is the ultimate champion. Mia Hamm, professional soccer player. S is for smile. We smile because at the end of the day, it is a game. We are kids, we are kids and the reward is getting to play with and against our friends. I was taught to respect people and be nice to them. I just try to be myself, have fun, smile, and be the best that I can be. Using both professional sprinter and soccer player. Thank you, and go Patriots! Me, me, me! What's up, dude? Cool costume, dude. Oh my god! It's Luciano Williams! What's wrong with us? On November 29th at 2.15, San Francisco Opera will bring Opera a la carte to perform a shortened version of the Elixir of Love. The words will be translated to English and several 8th grade students will perform roles on stage, while the 4th through 8th grade students will sing the two chorus songs you are about to hear. Parents of these grades are welcome to attend. Thank you for being with us today. 